tell you what, uh, we sure really just put the house of hell at bay, didn't we? <laughs> we told the house of hell to give way. <laughs> and uh, by God's grace, uh, we, we see how God's love uh, just, how it just moves mightily on his children. I, I trust you can say this morning, I ain't tired yet. That's I'm not right. tired yet. That's right. Amen. Yeah. It's good to see Brother Austin Sister Lena uh, married now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we rejoice. And uh, uh, we're rejoicing at what the Lord's doing here. Uh, you know, you come and visit and you just uh, uh, you hear the wonderful worship, the wonderful love for God, the wonderful love for the hearing of the word. Hey, look at that. Praise the living God. I'm very excited now. Amen. All right. Uh, you do a lot of work making a PowerPoint. It's good to get it to the people. And uh, that our work was not in vain. And uh, this morning, uh, we'd just like to say once again, we just uh, we love every single one of you. Uh, you're very precious people. I, I really believe with all of my heart uh, that we're we're not called to be in the general resurrection. We're called to be in the first resurrection together. And I believe that that's what the Lord is doing here. He's uh, raising his children up in revelation and understanding. I must have preached long last night because they're working on that clock right now. <laughs> uh -huh. So we'll try to be mindful of your time today. And uh, But yet I, I want to... Uh, uh, the Lord just kind of impressed uh, another thought on my heart uh, today for you, and you know how I am. I uh, that's heard me preach. I, I love to tie everything in with the Word of God, yes. and I what I love about it is that uh, you know Brother Branham hit highlights and he and he brought right. things into a spot where uh, he basically showed us what God wanted to do um, and ultimately the plan of it. But when you actually dive into the Scripture, you actually see it's fuller and richer. Uh, than the highlight he brought. It's actually, he hit exactly what it was, but when we get in the Bible, we find that this is actually more than what I thought it was before. And uh, today we're going to work with that type of idea and uh, be a very simple sermon. Uh, I'm going to approach this in two ideas as far as uh, um, one to the church, uh, to the bride, and then I'm going to go to the individual. Uh, and then uh, by the Lord's help, uh, uh, this is just something uh, that the Lord really blessed me with. And uh, I know he's blessed our church at home with this idea. Last night was uh, something uh, he gave me on the way over here. I, I hadn't preached that anywhere, but uh, uh, today uh, we're, we're going to just kind of put some things together for you. And uh, we trust, uh, uh, if you ain't tired yet, just, uh, just rejoice in the Holy Spirit being here. Uh, rejoice in his word to you. And uh, I'll tell you what, if, if we can start building that atmosphere of faith, uh, then God can really, really do a mighty work today. I don't know about you. I, I'm not satisfied with, with yesterday or last week's experience. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Branham said, he said, we should never be comfortable with, with an experience in the past. He said, we can't be satisfied that you received the Holy Ghost 10 years ago and just move on from there. We need God to constantly just pour his spirit out on us. And we're coming to that just like we showed last night. It's getting smaller, but the power is growing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Exodus 20, verse 12. Might be a little bit of a strange. Uh, uh, on my computer, uh, I have everything in highlights and underlines, but when I put it on here, it doesn't have any of that. Uh, so I'll just try to emphasize it myself. Uh, here it is, what looks like the Ten Commandments now, don't it? <laughs> uh, I want you to see this. Uh, uh, I'm going to focus right here in Exodus 20, 15, Thou shalt not steal. Okay, and uh, we'll follow this idea today. Um, Exodus 20, verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, uh, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And uh, we'll focus right here on the 15th verse. It says, Thou shalt not steal. All right? I ain't calling anybody thieves here today. But I know there is a great thief. It's the devil. Hallelujah. Now watch. This is God's righteousness coming out. Thou shalt not steal. Well, I wonder if there is a thief, then what will God do to recompense that which was stolen? We're going to follow this idea today. I trust that you'll be blessed. 
uh, Joel 1, verse 4. We hear a lot about restoration, and uh, today I'm going to bring this in a little bit of a different way for you because uh, what I find out is, you know, Brother Branham hit restoration, but this actually goes all over the place. And uh, I, I want to build your expectation for something, okay? We'll get to this after a little bit here. But like I said, I'm going to start with the seven church ages, uh, move that in on into the even uh, your church. Uh, and, and this is one of the things God was working with me. I'm like, because you can actually see the condition of your church by tying it in with restoration. And when I say that, that's, that's the message, the restoration of the bride tree. So you'll be able to tell. You'll see exactly where you're at as a body. Amen. Is that possible? Well, do, we, do we just aimlessly walk around in any certain direction? Or, or did God give us enough understanding to be able to identify where we're at? Okay, So you can see already I'm taking a little bit different route, but you know I'm going to get excited. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> the quicker you, get the, you, you, you pull on the word and, and get that anointing brewing, uh, the worship's already done it. Now you just keep on with that worship towards God, right? Uh, Joel 1 verse 4 says, That which the palm worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left uh, hath the camp canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. All right. Uh, you know there's two places that this is brought in. It's brought in here in Joel 1, and then it's also expressed in Joel 2.25. But Brother Bram actually made it. All, uh, when he preached restoration of the bride tree, he actually worked with it in this order. They're in different orders. Okay? So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and we'll get right to where the Lord has led us this morning. Lord Jesus, we, we humbly come before you right now, Lord, and uh, it's a great hour to live. And to know, Lord, that, that and as I'm looking at this, what I am seeing, oh God, is I am seeing, oh God, the pattern that, that the followers that followed the message and what they have done, they've actually allowed things to be scattered. Instead of just following the message and the messenger, they place their own human ideas into things. And Lord, we realize that, Lord, we're in an hour where your word, just as Brother Branham ministered it, is just as applicable today as it was when he was here. That means we can expect you to do the same things, Lord. Uh, the same things that you did in that ministry, you can do here, Lord. Uh, and yet, Lord, even within all those highlights sown, God, it was your desire to show us the way back, Lord, uh, to what the Acts Church had, Lord. Because that was a body in full demonstration of your power and might to a generation that was untoward, the Scripture says. So, Lord, we're just asking this morning that you uh, just anoint the words to be spoken, Lord. And, and Lord, I, I always say it like this. I, I believe and I, and I feel like you're leading me this way, oh God. But, Lord, uh, I want to be free to be able to go wherever you want me, Lord. So I'm asking today, oh God, that you'd move me uh, however thou uh, willest, Lord. Uh, I, am, I am just clay. You are the potter, Lord. Just like these people here, Lord, these great saints of God. Lord, they are just clay and you are the potter, Lord. So form us into the image of thy word, O oh God. Make us so we could be vessels constantly filled with your spirit, filled up, O oh God, so that we can be put in service for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the church says together, amen. You may be seated. I like this guy's face. <laughs> amen. Uh, in a way, it kind of almost looks like Malachi without glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but today, we're going to uh, work with this idea, um, the law of restoration, okay? And uh, we want to focus today on the robbed restored. And uh, we're going to bring this in a direction uh, that I want to build your expectation uh, in what you perceive that God wants to do for you, all right? Uh, a lot of times we, we place ourselves at, uh, that we say, oh God, I just would really just like for, you know, something to be restored. I'd like to have that back. Um, but the scripture actually paints a very powerful uh, image before us. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to tie in all these things 
and uh, working with the law of restoration uh, this, this afternoon, we want to start just by defining it. Um, to restore is to return to a person uh, as a specific thing uh, which he has lost, all right? So in order to receive restoration, you have to realize that something has been taken away, amen? I don't know about what you expect your church to be like, amen? But uh, if you can see what the Word said about the Acts Church, that is actually what God made you to be, amen? He made you to be filled with power, amen? Filled with demonstration of the Holy Ghost, amen? Hallelujah, in such a way that the gifts of the Spirit would be working through here just like they were in Brother Branham's ministry, amen? Hallelujah. I'd love to preach it, but uh, you realize there is a thus saith the Lord that is to move through this laity. Amen. When Brother Branham talked about the, 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 the local body coming under the gifts of the Spirit, he said they would work exactly like his gift. That tongues would come forth, amen, on somebody. And then another person would what? Interpret it. And they'd say, Sally Jones, there's going to be a hurricane that's going to come through. You stay away from it and go a different direction. It would be the discernment of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And it would make you bypass things, amen. It would make you avoid unnecessary temptations and trials. That was the Holy Ghost working in the original church. And I tell you, if you don't see it today, what do you need? You need to be restored. Do you see what's yours? God made it your right by His Holy Ghost and your yielding to it that you would see this gospel in full effect as it's ever been. So now you see what you are supposed to manifest, what you're supposed to make known. You're supposed to make it known to one another. You're supposed to make it known to anybody that ever comes in here or whether you're out and about, you are called to make known Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Let's begin. In Joel 2.25 This is a very powerful thing which we in the message have a true understanding of, which is so beautiful. It says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God claims it as what? His army. (laughs) And what? He sent it to them. Don't you, hey, brother, sister, don't get it wrong, Amen. God, in the book of Job, he let Satan have Job. Because he wanted to show, just as he did, death, burial, and resurrection. It's always God's move to take away so that he can restore. At the end, we're going to get to how much. (laughs) Hallelujah. But I want you to see this. Because he said he would restore what he allowed to happen. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. This paints a very beautiful picture in the church age book. It says, now it says God is going to restore. The Lutheran age did not restore the church. It started a reformation. The Wesleyan age did not restore. The Pentecostal age did not restore. But God has to restore for he cannot deny his word. So if you have not seen the original Acts Church in expression, that tells you right there that the restoration hasn't fully come yet. And if you identify yourself in the bride, then it has to happen to you. (laughs) So he says, this is not the resurrection of the church. It is the restoration. Now, God will take the church right back to Pentecost of the beginning. All right? So you have to be that. You will be that. You might as well say, I am that. Amen? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Just like they asked that police officer with a billy club. They said, they said, can you point us to the revival? He said, I am the revival. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am the Welsh revival. Amen. <laughs> you are the bride's revival for this age. Amen. You've received that, so you have to what? Get in condition to the identification of the word which you are. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, watch. He says, verse 25, it tells us why we need restoration. Why do we need restoration? The locust, cankerworm, caterpillar, palmworm have eaten all but the root and a small bit of the stem. Now, we are told. Now, watch this. It's underlined here. He said, now, now. Where are we at? Now we are told that, the, that all these insects are all one and the same in different stages. All right? Now he's going to identify what this is. Okay? Now I, I'm going to bring you around because I remember I, uh, the things I open up with, I got to tell you. All right? So he says, that is right. So what are these insects? All right? Watch what he says. He says, they are the Antichrist spirit manifested. In organization, denomination, false doctrine through the ages. So he says those four bugs are nothing separate than the actual what? Than the, the four movings of the Antichrist spirit in the church ages. So we can look at one and then we can put the other there and they are all the same. Now, this will paint a powerful picture for you, and I'm going to try to be uh, quick about it. It says and that, that poor little root and stalk is going to be restored. God isn't going to plant a new church, but is going to bring his original planting back to original seed. Aren't you glad about that? He is doing it, as stated in verse 23, by the teaching or former rain. So we have to, before we can get a latter rain, we have to what receive a teaching rain. Amen? That's what Brother Branham's ministry was, was to teach us the truth of the word. Amen? Amen. And when that truth becomes a revelation, then the church will stand to her feet. Amen? Amen. Remember, Satan cannot fight revelation. Right. Once you have revelation, he can't defeat you there anymore. Amen. Because you have what? Joined with the word of who you are. Hallelujah. How can I go back to the world? I'm the bride. <laughs> how, can I, how, how can I move that direction? My flesh wants to, but I've received something on the inside that will not let me go back. Amen. Instead, it tells me I can be excited for this word, that I can be victorious in this word. And that the very authority that God said in his word I can have, I have it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The demons shall be cast out. Hallelujah. Yeah. The demons should be set ablaze. Amen. Yeah. By the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has quickened you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now watch. Next will come. The harvest rain or rapturing thing. Amen. It can't come until the, the word that has been sowed to us is received in revelation. That's why, brother, sister, I've preached this at home church already. But I got very interested in this. Because I watched when Brother Branham died. I watched the message split off in five, ten routes. Now, I'm not saying that anybody is not saved. Or, or anybody's not there, or anybody's not bright. I'm not saying that. But you know what I did? I watched Junior Jackson study this up. I watched Junior Jackson go this way. I watched Lee Vale go this way. I watched Perry Green go this way. And everybody claims they have the right doctrine. Come on. I watched Joseph Coleman go this way. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, when, when, I, when the first time I was told that I was going to be a, a, a preacher. I was in the message uh, down, in, down in Lima. And there was a brother. A brother came up to me after service one night. And uh, he came up to me. And he said, God bless you. My name is so-and-so. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything there. 
He said, my name is so-and-so. I said, God bless you, brother. Pleasure to meet you. He said, he said I'm just going to cut to the chase. Did you know that God has ordained you to be a preacher? I said, no, sir. He said, I'm telling you right now. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that you were ordained to be a preacher. Right. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Little old me. <laughs> now I got to turn to this. And that's why I'm telling this. So we talked a little bit, fellowship, and then he walked off. And then I had a brother come up to me from the church, the sweetest brother ever. And he came up to me and he said, Brother Cam, do you know who that is? I said, no, but he just prophesied that I was going to be a preacher. And he said, brother, you stay away from that brother. I said, why is that? He said, he's a seven thunder believer. I said, what's that? He says, it's just some crazy doctrine. It's just a crazy doctrine, Brother Cam. And so you know what I did? I said, yes, sir. And I stayed away from it. And I stayed away from that brother because he told me to. Oh, wow, are we quiet. <laughs> but what is that? That's denominationalism. Over the last 15 years, I've asked probably 8, 10 people. I even asked people that were in the Seven Thunder Movement what they believe. No one knows what they believe. This person says, well, I think it's this. You went to a, a, a Seven Thunder church for 10 years, and that's all you understand about it? What do you know about coming here? How could the people be in a spot that they have no clue what they believe? Right. Hallelujah. Even before I came here, I, I started watching Junior Jackson. I'm like, okay, what, what's this brother all about? And I watched him, and, and right after that, I, I, I got in contact. I had a brother come up from, from Jeffersonville area, and he's preached for me. And I said, I said uh, what about Junior Jackson? He said, oh, brother, they're way off in right field. But I listened to three of his sermons. I didn't even hear anything wrong. And I'm like, what is all this? What I'm trying to tell you is denominationalism has swept the message. Right. Right. Stay away. Stay away from Brother Cam. Stay away from that Brother Jesse guy. <laughs> no? I'm telling you, Brother Sister, Brother Branham did not come to tell us to separate. He came to show us the fullness of the word. And even if we different, we're different in our thoughts, it should never stop love from coming forth from our life. And I'm waking up to this purpose because actually what I was dealing with un unknowingly is I was dealing with locusts, cankerworms, caterpillars, and palmer worms. And I didn't even know it. Now, let me take this a little bit, and, and I don't want to only preach on this. I got a lot to say. But I, I want you to, I preach a whole series on this, and I, and I want to show in just a little bit, okay? Because I want you to see, you can tell where people in the message are, and you can tell where your own church is. Right. Brother Branham said that the palmer worm was the same as the Antichrist spirit. He said the locust was the same as the Antichrist spirit. He said the canker worm was the same as the Antichrist spirit. The caterpillar was the same as the Antichrist spirit. Now watch this, because what I'm going to show you is, it is organization that took God away from the church. Then they would have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. Now, if we know our Bible, the Bible says, from such turn away. Amen. You have a right to the, what, the truth of the word. Amen. You have a right to the power of God. That's why restoration is so important. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what I found was so amazing about all this, and like I said, I got sermons for each one, one to two. But uh, Brother Bram started out in the Restoration Bride Tree preaching on the palm worm. He said, what did that, word, what that worm do? He said, it took away the fruit. When you get into the deeds of the Nicolaitan, it's the first step into death. <laughs> Where the power begins to not manifest like it's supposed to in the church. Why? Because they start to what? 
separates the leader from the laity. He's smarter than y'all. He knows more. Look at how he can preach. There's no separation between the laity and the preacher. If you want to, go back in Brother Jesse's office and read the quote on the wall. Brother Bram said, he said he is actually a servant and he was actually lesser than them all because he was a public servant. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want you to see this. What it took away was the fruit of the Spirit and the power of God. Read the message. Go into the message. Find it out. Next was the locusts. And Brother Bram said, what did the locusts eat? The leaves. What were the leaves? Now you can tell. So here's what I'm saying. If you don't have the full fruits of the Spirit in the church, the gifts of the Spirit, we still haven't come out of that. Brother Cam, I don't, I don't. Brother, sister, it's a spirit that moves. It tells the laity that they don't have to do anything. It's a spirit that moves. Oh, Brother Jesse, he's supposed to do all that. You are the body. Each one of you are called every joint supplieth. You can't get away from it, brother, sister. That is what God called you to be in action. Amen. He called you to carry the work of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You realize your pastor, he's not even called to come out here and what? Anoint you. You are called, amen, to have an anointing before he even gets here. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. You're called, amen, that the Holy Ghost can bring healing during your worship services. Amen. amen. With When your preacher's back out there, amen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. amen. So you can identify where you're at. My church, we're still trying to get out of these deeds. Hallelujah. Notice, secondly, it's what? It ties right in with the doctrine of Nicolaitans. Now it just becomes the way of doing things, right? Yep, there's a separation between the preacher and all of them, right? But yet, those leads were fellowship and cooling. So it begins to separate the people. The leads of fellowship. Hallelujah. So when you find a church that got no fellowship, What's going on? It's beginning to separate more and more. Now watch this because when you are right here with the fruit of God, you are in unity. You're working together. You realize you got something to do. Hallelujah. You might have to pray an hour. You might have to pray too. You follow the leading of the Lord because that is what? That is needed to make the body what it needs to be. There might be a fasting warrior out in this church here, amen. And what? That might be your call of all of it, to be fasting for the preachers, amen. Remember Brother Branham in one meeting, he said, he said, for the powerful things that God has done these services, he said, I'd like to give credit to these two sisters over here that were fasting and praying for these services. Amen. Hallelujah. When that gift got into the spiritual realm, amen, it found two sisters that broke through to God, amen. amen. And all those healings, everything that was working, it was working because the laity had position, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm going to try to hurry up. Then third, we have the cankerworm, which took away the bark, right? And Brother Bram said, uh, that, that was what? That bark was the religion, the covering, the doctrine, right? right? And that's what doctrine of Balaam does. Very, very simple. Balaam taught the people to what? Commit spiritual fornication. Right. That's fornication, but spiritual, right? Amen. So what? You start getting down and all of a sudden we'll just do anything. We will take the precepts of organization and foster the message through it. Be careful now. Amen. Then lastly, you have caterpillar. Like I said, I'm going to hurry up. And what the caterpillar actually got into the tree and began to eat all the life or the pulp out of the tree. And what? It ties right in with Jezebel, which is spiritual death. She began to die. That was that fourth church age. Amen. They begin to die, right? Now remember, your rights are way up here. You're called to have all of it. But what did you need? Now notice, somebody stole something away from you. Something made your church 
not what it was supposed to be. Amen. Amen. But you still have the right and freedom to get back to what he called you to be. Hallelujah. Now, watch how simple this is. Hallelujah. When God started a restoration, he brought justification. Now, remember, uh, let me just say this uh, real quickly. Because when God anointed Brother Branham to show who the messengers were, they had to have the same characteristics. And they all were against organization. (laughs) They were all against what? About placing man's will into the church. But as soon as they passed on, the church ran right with it. They did it in the message too, brother, sister. Hallelujah. So first step back. (laughs) What? Justification. Now you get your church age books and you follow the quote. There's a quote pattern that goes right through there. And it, what? it brings it right back. So justification. Now bring your pull back. Spiritual death is gone. You're not dead. You feel dead today? You need to be restored. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Sanctification, the bark was restored. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which is what? So notice it comes up in reverse order all the way back out. Okay, so the bark was restored, or what? The doctrine is beginning to be restored, right? Then what? Then you have spiritual gifts come in, and the the leaves of fellowship, right? How come people in the message ain't got gifts like they ought to? I'm telling you, it went so quickly, because right right when Brother Branham passed off, those things were just being settled in Branham Tabernacle. So Jesse knows, some of you saints, you study this out, you find it right out. He talked about all those people with the gifts and so forth, how it's supposed to operate. He laid it all out because they were beginning to work in a certain way. Hallelujah. So then it comes back to spiritual gifts, the leaves restored. Because what? It takes unity, brother, sister. Brother Bram said, he said, we should have so many gifts in the church. He said that that those that are gifted should meet a half hour to an hour before service and pray and seek God and let the gifts be used there. And then, he said, then it should go to those with wisdom and the ability to what? Judge. And they should judge them. And then they should be read to the church. And if all those gifts are working right, then it will what? Prophesy to the people. Hallelujah. It will put things right down to the thoughts and intents of the heart to the church. Anybody want a church like that? (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said, he said, why? He said, he would call out somebody coming to the church and tell why they weren't getting their healing and what it was that they would get if they did it right. It's a lot of sermons there, brother, sister, but but just just to to hit hit highlights like the prophet hit highlights, right? And then lastly, you have the word of God had to be restored. Hallelujah. And what? That brought the fruit, the fruit back. So if we've received the truth of the word, then why is it not producing? Or have we been what? Brought up in a message full of creeds and dogmas. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, I've come to understand and learn that, that because of how things have went, there have been many creeds and dogmas brought right into the message of Yahweh, and all of them are based off quotes. So what do you have to do? Study it out. Search it out. Find it out. But sister, this is very important because it shows what God is trying to do with you. Hallelujah. Don't ever expect anybody else to do your work. God has an individual work he has for you. All right? Hallelujah. Get moving, Brother Cam. All right. I sure will. I want to sew that in there for about 15 minutes, 20. And let you know what has happened in the message, but where we're at right now is the words begin to unfold like never before. Hallelujah. God is what? He's bringing it to us. Come out of her. Come out of everything that Catholicism sowed in there with her daughters. Stay out of it. And follow the perfect word. Now watch this. 
Isaiah 42, 18. Now, I'm going to turn now, all right? I'm, I'm going to go right back into, into what God has for you uh, as far as uh, uh, the, the heart of where I want to go with this, all right? Uh, Isaiah 42, 18 says, Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. I preached this here probably 10 years ago. That's when you guys were in the other, uh, the other place. I'm not going to focus on this, but I want to hit the highlight because but, look, they're deaf and they're blind. Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as, as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? They can't hear and they can't see. Ah, seeing many things, but thou observest not. Sounds like Laodicea. They're blind, miserable, wretched, and they don't know it. They don't know what the word has entitled them to. They don't know what. They don't care about it. They're just what? They just want to follow some sort of little message path. We're called to receive the full, unadulterated word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't think that God can't bring it through your pastor. Amen. Don't think that God can't ordain a fivefold ministry to bring it in. Amen. God is more than able to bring the fullness of the truth to you. Amen. Hallelujah. I had a fellow preach a, a while back, and I knew he was so full of dogmas. And while he was preaching, I just felt led to have him come. And while he's preaching, it just came on my heart. Like this, this overwhelming feel, feeling came to, came to my heart. And this feeling said, he's going to preach some false doctrines. You know what I did? I closed my eyes, and I said, Lord, hold that brother's mouth that he can only speak the truth. And after I did that, I watched that brother, and and, and he almost started fumbling with it. You could see he started fumbling with his thoughts a little bit. And I watched when every time he brought his thought out, he said something true. (laughs) And we got to the end of the service, I said, hallelujah, because that's my right. That's my right as a preacher. There was a lot of truth that came out. And even, brothers, and message, hey, we have a commonality of the word that we can join together. You don't think the power of our God, who said all things are possible if you believe, when he brings a thought to you, you can't bind the mouth of the preacher to only say truth? I'll tell you, that's how powerful the God we serve is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a brother in the church that knew that that brother preached all sorts of crazy stuff. And he came up to me afterwards and said, he said, brother, I was so expecting for him to say something crazy and far out. Because he does it everywhere. And I looked at him and said, yep, yep, prayer changes things. (laughs) And I left it right there. You're the first people I told about it. (laughs) Hallelujah. But our God is able, amen. To hold us to the word. Amen. Amen. Now watch these people seeing many things without his service not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. He might have people that are blind and they can't hear a thing in this word. Amen. But he's more than able to bring forth those that can't. They can see it, and they can hear it. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. So when the people lose the ability to see the word, to see the manifestation of the spirit, to hear it, to see it. Remember, Brother Jesse was the one that he, when he preached that so many years ago, he said, he said, uh, uh, and brought it out. I never, ever seen it like that, and it still holds me. I still preach it. I still preach exactly what my pastor of the, of the years ago said. But he said, he said that Holy Ghost is now something you can see and hear. Right. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. From your life. 
life. Amen. The Holy Ghost is something you can see and hear. Amen. 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 So if you can't see it on somebody, you can't hear it. There's something wrong with the Holy Ghost experience in that individual. But I'll tell you, you don't have to live that way. You don't have to accept that way. There's one thing you've got to do, amen. Watch this. The people were robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. You are not called to be snared, trapped. You are not called to what? To feel like you're in a prison house. That's one thing I should have said. I should have said less because Brad Jesse's like, who's got it? How's the hell? Uh, what else can we lose? And it's on my heart to say loneliness. Hallelujah. Like you're caught up in some prison house and nobody understands you. God understands you. A lot of your brothers and sisters understand you. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm the only one that's got to deal with that. Brother Branham said it's a complex, amen. But I'll tell you that Jesus Christ can set you free, amen. Now I want you to watch the difference here. Oh my, hallelujah. It says, they are for a prey and none delivereth. For a spoil and none saith restore. They were completely satisfied in their snares and prison houses. Sitting right in the church. They were just fine not watching the communion of the Holy Ghost give them a smile that they couldn't get rid of. Why do I got to help that? You shouldn't have to help that. Jesus Christ's power Gets in you in such a way. Remember in John 7, he said, he shall, it, it, shall, it shall flow from your belly as rivers of living water. It's something that flows out of you, this Holy Ghost. I can't help but be happy. I cannot help but praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We never even experienced what Paul and Silas, there they were in stocks and bonds. Amen. But there they were, praising the Lord, singing His grace, His glory, how great thou art. And what happened, amen, when they cried out, the what? The stocks and bonds broke by earthquake, amen. Because they still had joy in tribulation. <laughs> the issue is people get so satisfied in that depleted condition where they've been robbed of the devil that they don't even say, God, restore it, please. God, I believe you can restore it. They don't even think of it. So Satan is in the business of stealing everything you have. Hallelujah. But notice, he didn't say, none doeth restore. Once again, we're right back to a Roman centurion. Just speak only. Where's a person saying, I have lost something? See what I'm saying? Especially as human beings, we are so easily able to affiliate with what we have lost in our natural experience. Right? I've lost my health. I've lost my, my, my freedom as far as uh, to be free to fellowship. I, I've lost my, 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 my freedom to, to worship God like I want to. Because you're watching the pattern of what your natural self has done. See, if you have been caught right there, you haven't even been moved to a place where God says, I will restore everything. Because that's something that you haven't even experienced. Tongues, interpretations, specific. 
prophecy. Paul said, he said in 1 Corinthians 14, I would that ye all would prophesy. That's your word. That's, if you get restored, that's what you are. But he's got to get rid of the things that we've accepted in our own life. Someone's got to get in the condition that if God spoke by his word himself, I will restore, saith the Lord. Someone's got to get in a condition and say, God, restore me, amen. Restore this church, amen. Hallelujah. This is the restoration. This is what my church is. This is what my life is. It's all right here. Hallelujah. Your blood, remember, his blood purchased it. I preached a sermon. It was called... uh, It was called uh, the heavenly blood applied because that's the power of this word, what God told us. We look and say he shed his blood back there. But if you can see the deeper alignment with it, when Jesus Christ became the sacrifice at Calvary and resurrected, what did he actually do? He went up to the mercy seat that was already established in heaven. And what? There the blood is applied. That's why he's the high priest of your profession. There is blood there. Get it. There has been blood there every single day of your life. (laughs) Hallelujah. That blood never lost its power. It's still there. Don't think Brother Bram didn't say it. Brother Branham said it. Amen. The Bible says it. Hallelujah. It is a true revelation. The blood ain't dried off. It's sitting now in heavenly places to intercede for you for your every single need. Amen. That's why you cry restoration. You're believing on a heavenly blood that's sitting right there. Glory. They were so dead that they couldn't even see their conditions. Don't think that Laodicea at this very end of the age is not the same. All right, you ready for a turn? Let's look at the law of restoration. Because I want want to, this is very simple, but I want to show you something very powerful. So I'm not going to go into, that's the Jubilee trumpet. You realize what the Jubilee was a type of. Every 50 years, every man who got snared lost his inheritance. Maybe he lost his property. Maybe he lost his family. Whatever he lost on the Jubilee, uh, the Jubilee year, the 50th year, he could go back and take everything that was his. That 50 years was a type of the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. 50 days. Hallelujah. God fulfilled that with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wait for 50 years. Let me say it like this. You don't need to wait 50 days. Hallelujah. The Bible says they were in one place and one accord. Amen. Hallelujah. And what on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost swept through them. Amen. And filled them with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is your jubilee. The Holy Ghost is your excitement, amen. The Holy Ghost is what makes you want to serve God, amen. It's your power and it's your right. You are called to never lose your spiritual land again, amen. Hallelujah. That first church, it's your right. Hallelujah. You are part of that bride. And you want. It's been lost, but it's yours. Amen. Believe it. Amen. Ask for it. Amen. Stand on it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your profession. I am the Acts 2 church. I am, amen, a child of God, bought by his blood, saved by grace. 
Hallelujah. Because I want you to see this today. It was God and God alone that brought your restoration. Watch what he says in John 10, 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Hallelujah. Now watch. He's talking about his day and what was before him. If you actually establish it, what made the Pharisees? What made the Sadducees? Thieves and robbers. Well, how do you know? Because what? Those individuals produce such organization that what? That the people come under that organizational mindset. And when Christ, the true word, come, they could not accept it. That's what organizational spirit does. It makes you so you can't receive the what? The perfect word. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what do you think we've had for 2,000 years? Thieves and robbers. Preaching a different message. Right. Hallelujah. What adding and taking away from the word. But God gave us a seventh angel. That we can see what the true word is. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Thieves and robbers. But notice, but the sheep did not hear them. I've watched over and over and over again in my life. Even how God brought me into this message. But God, he would use it just like he did in the scripture. It was like a wheat plant coming forth. It started growing and then you have a stalk. Then what? Then you got a tassel. Then you got a shuck. And out of the shuck, remember the shuck was so close, it, it just fit, it fit the seed. But there came a time, it looked exactly like the seed, but there came a time where the seed had to come out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm excited, I can't help it. Hallelujah! Don't worry, I got more. Hallelujah! I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you get into Jesus and Jesus alone, this church don't save you. Brother Jesse don't save you. Brother Cam don't save you for sure. Amen. The only one that can save you is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go to him that bought your redemption. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Enter into him, the one that died for your sin. Amen. Love him more than anything else. Amen. You'll be on all right. But notice, his sheep, they wouldn't get caught by the thieves and the robbers. Hallelujah. They wouldn't get caught by all the false doctrines. They wouldn't be caught by all the lies. They would what? They constantly set their faces towards the word. Remember, this is anointed ones at the end time. I ain't got time to preach those messages. It's going to be so close it would deceive the elect if possible. It means it has to come right out of the message. I'm not saying that if someone's sitting in a specific church that they ain't going to make it. Because you don't know who's got the Holy Ghost and where they got the Holy Ghost. I don't know what God did. I know how God did with me. I was sitting in an assembly of God church wanting to be a preacher. Hallelujah. And then, then these brothers caught it. And I almost went toe to toe with Brother Jesse. You know I'm only alive today because he didn't swing. Hallelujah. That's God's grace. His muscles are as big as my legs. <laughs> but one day God opened my eyes up. And I seen it. Hallelujah. Watch. He says, the thief cometh not but for the steal and kill and destroy. He wants you to have a subpar experience aside from Jesus Christ. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. He has come to what? Give you the fullness of life. Amen. If you have been caught under 
the what? The stealing, the killing, and the destroying of Satan. Amen. God can restore it with life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You know what that was? That was actually a purchase. He purchased his elect seed with the shedding of his blood. Amen. Amen. The perfect sacrifice. Remember, what we're waiting on is redemption's claim. (laughs) Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, he's coming back for me. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to see it. He's coming back for you. Amen. His blood was the perfect purchase of me. How do I know it? By the revealing and the opening of the word. Now watch. Jesus Christ is the restoration. He's the fullness of the restoration. You get him, you have restoration. I want you to see it. That's the evil of Laodicea. Because it wants you to hybrid something with the word. It wants you to hybrid your thoughts, your hobbies, what you like. It wants to hybrid everything with the Word. Right, it, wants, it wants a message, Pastor. It wants, it wants us to, to look and say, well, we should do it because they're doing it. Right. Message churches are getting big because of that. I ought to do it too. That's not how this works. There is a, a specific will of God for His people. And it comes only by the Word. I said something there. I know your pastor. He'll, he'll help out whatever way he can after I walk out these doors. Amen. Brother Cam's a little bit fanatical. You just leave me the way I am because I see something right now and I, it's not shaking on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Don't think I ain't seen the vindication of the Spirit. I'm rolling with this, brother and sister. I'm seeing it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Watch us. So what is the true mind of God on restoration? Look at I got that more. So if you have someone steal, spiritually kill you, destroy your life, what could Christ do? I want you to watch this. This is very powerful. Leviticus 6, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence or hath deceived his neighbor or have found that which was lost and lieth concerning it and sweareth falsely in any of these that a man doeth sinning therein. Hallelujah. So if anybody would do anything like that to somebody else, they would take what they have. They'd lie about it. Yeah. Amen. Right. They would deceitfully take it. Yeah. Watch this now. Then it shall be, because he has sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore yeah. that which he took violently away. Or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten. Or that which was delivered him to keep. Or the lost thing which he found. He has to restore it. God made a law amongst the natural church of Israel. That if someone took something away, they'd have to give it back. Now watch this. So he says, where am I at? Right down here. What I move? The thing which he deceived God, or that which was delivered to him, the lost thing which he found, or all that was about which he sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle. You know what that means? That means if something was unrightfully taken from that individual, he has to give them exactly what they took back. He has to restore it. 
But watch this. There's an icing on the cake. All right? And, so wait a minute. God in his law not only says he has to give back what he took and shall add the fifth part more thereto and give it unto him whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. Hallelujah. So if the devil took something away from you, by the law of God, he has to give it back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But watch this. He don't only have to give it back. He has to give you more than what he took. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. This is the law of God. Not only do you get it back, but you get bonus. Hallelujah. Watch what he says in Restoration of the Bride Tree. Like if somebody stole some property and they're holding the property captive, then you can take the law. You see how, how underprivileged we lived? How we live? You have the right by the word of God. You have the right by the word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> then you can take the law and go to this person. And the law forces, enforces this person to restore this property back to its natural owner. And it's to the first estate. Enforcement. Oh, what a text. How I'd like to have two days on that in force. Amen. Now notice this. You don't have the right as an individual with your own power, your own will to get it back. You have a law and an enforcer of that law. Remember, we don't have the quote and pry down the road, but it says, well, the Holy Ghost is that enforcer. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost will enforce the law of God that you get back what the devil took away. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, you have a right of restoration by the law of God to get everything that has ever been taken away. Amen. And if you can see what that is, you can say, my nine spiritual gifts, amen. amen. Hallelujah. The freedom of worship, amen. amen. The ability to bring the Shekinah glory in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my right by the word of God. Amen. It's my right to have a church in one accord, amen. amen. It's my right to what? Be free and happy to serve Jesus. It's the law of restoration. Watch. Exodus 22, 1. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, watch this, if he just steal one ox, if he kills it, he shall restore five oxen. The law of restoration? Why not just one? I want you to see this. God, he wants to so spoil the enemy, the transgressor of his law, that he will force that transgressor to give you back more than what he took. Fivefold. So if he takes one ox, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Hallelujah. 
This also tells us how to treat one another, doesn't it? Don't treat your brother wrong. Don't steal his joy from him. Right? That's why Brother Bram said, he said, he said, you talk nasty about your pastor. He said, you've already killed the man. So who's responsible? You killed his reputation. Let alone what you might say about your brother or sister. We're all in this together. We are all uniquely called for this. Speak what? Speak only blessings upon your brother or sister. If you see a fault that needs to be addressed, address it. But what? Do it in love. And what? Don't let it change your opinion about them. Because you are called, as our brother said earlier, to love. Ye shall know your disciples by their love. Hallelujah. Let's say it like this. You need them just as much as they need you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the thing. When what? When that which is taken away is brought back, you don't know how far the blessings of restoration will go down the line. Amen. Hallelujah. I only wanted my one ox back. You see, you see the issues we get in? Well, if I could just have my health back. Oh, God, that's all I want. The devil took it. That's not how the word works. You are accepting a lie that all you get back is your health. What's the word say? He's going to give you that which he took and then a fifth. He's going to take that which he took, which was an ox, and give you a five. <laughs> Hallelujah! Four for sheep. Now watch this. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be an ox or an ass or a sheep, he shall restore double. So if you find it and he didn't kill it, he's going to give you back two. <laughs> Just for the act of it. Now watch. What about the devil, brother, sister? You don't think God controls this devil? You don't think God can force something on him? It's that easy. But you've got to know the enforcer of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to believe this is his job. Amen. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put his, in his beast and shall feed in another man's field. Look how simple this goes to. Somebody, if you own a land and somebody puts an ox in there and they start eating your grass. Watch this. So if feeding another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. He's got to make restitution of anything. No matter what it is, anything taken away, he has to restore it. Amen. Look what Solomon says. Proverbs 6.30. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But... If he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. <laughs> he shall give all the substance of his house. Sounds like something Jesus said. He said when a, when a strong man's got his house and he thinks he's got his goods, he said when one stronger comes, he taketh away all that he has and spoil his own goods. You don't think Satan took away, or, uh, or what Satan took away, Jesus will not take back? That's his purpose. The Bible says he, he destroyed the works of the devil. Amen. And what? The Bible says you can redeem the time. I need a restoration of the time I've lost. Get it. Hallelujah. Now notice, brother and sister, those seven church ages each brought a virtue. <laughs> those seven church ages, what? All brought a message. That's what your church age book is. Just like it says, and, and how can I overcome each church age got an, a, a, a blessing, a reward for overcoming. 
Hallelujah. And here we see Solomon. Remember, Solomon also said, he said what? He said that wise man is huge, seven pillars. <laughs> You're seven church ages, brother, sister. You don't have to leave what God has what? What he has bought in seven church ages. You are to be a reflection of what? Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness. And what receive that capstone love? Because that's all the devil has done. He's taken away the seven things which belong to us. But Christ come to restore the word, to identify what those were, and to show them that they're yours. And it's going to bring you into the stature of perfection. Amen. He's got to give everything up to you. He don't have a choice. Why? Because God's word said that. Amen. Not only do you see the witnesses like this, you see he word one, Joel 2, he said, I will restore. Amen. It all says it's yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 19, 5. Now watch, this is a son of God. And when Jesus came to the, to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and receiveth him joyfully. When the word come to him, Zacchaeus received him with all joy. Amen. The word has come to me. Every time you come to the house of God, every time you listen to a message, the word of God is coming to you. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Watch this. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Isn't that something? You look and say, oh, they all look down on me like I'm, like I'm evil and blah, 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 blah. So the word comes to people like that? <laughs> they might not be much in the religious world's eyes or their family eyes, but with Christ, he found it all worthy to go to such a man's house. Amen. This was a man that was a tax collector. What? Just stealing and taking from everyone else. Now watch this. And Zacchaeus stood. And said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. So when he come in contact with the word, he, he won. He didn't just keep on building his coffers. He began to give out. Not only that, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. God's law were just the same. <laughs> For what? For this thief as it did from a son of God who was a thief. God didn't tell, Jesus didn't say, you have to give half of everything you have. You got to restore it fourfold. But what? Just because the word came to him, it put him under an inspiration that all he had taken unrightfully, he was going to restore it according to the word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you stole, if you've done anything wrong, go give it back. Amen. <laughs> if the word comes to you, Hallelujah. Place it back where it belongs. Amen. Because watch what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. Because <laughs> what? He brought restoration. And what? As the trespass offering was made, he gave more than what he took. Oh my. For as much... This day salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. He was a seed of God. Amen. Everybody's getting quiet. Everybody steal something or what? 
Hallelujah. I'll tell you a story. 20, probably 20, 22, 23 years ago. My, my, my plant, I was working at Lear, and my plant closed down. And there was a guy who said, he said, most of this garbage you're going to throw away. He said, what do you think about that cart right there? And I said, I said, oh, that's really nice. He's like, take it. And I said, no. I said, I'm not taking that. He said, you're going to take it. I said, no, I'm not. I'm a Christian. I don't do stuff like that. He said, I'm going to be out at your car at break time, and I am going to force that in your car. And sure enough, I was out at my car at break time. Here he come with that thing. And he came, and there's, there he said, open your trunk. He's a lot bigger than me, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and so you know what I did? I let him put that cart in there. And I drove off. And I got home. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? They shut the plant down. I'm like, what am I going to do? And my busy lifestyle, I just forgot about it. I put it in the garage, and I'm like, this isn't even mine. I just left it there. And then uh, then I come to this message. I was sitting there one day. I said, Lord, what do I got to make right in this ball? And something come and said, you stole that car. And I'm sitting here. I didn't, I mean, I guess I kind of did. But this man literally forced me to steal it. And I didn't fight it. As far as I didn't know how to fight it, I mean, I'm not going to get in a fist fight with the guy. And it, I was just under my ignorance. I, I didn't know what, I, what was really going on. Right. And it came back and said, you return it. And I said, all right. I'm like, the plant's closed down. What do I do? I thought, come said, get on the Internet. So I found a Lear plant that was all the way up in Detroit, an hour and 15 minutes away from me. And the thoughts are already, Satan's rolling through my mind. Don't you do it. You're going to go to jail. Don't you do it. You're going to go to jail. I'm like, well, if I got to go to jail over this cart, I guess it is what it is. So I got to the place. I'm like, oh. And uh, I walked up and I knocked on, went in the office and said, I need to talk to somebody that's got some power around here. And they're like, okay. And so they said, go outside. Uh, we'll send the, the manager guy out. And I'm like, okay. So I walked out there and I said, uh, I said, okay. So I st- I'm just standing for like five minutes. I'm like, Lord, just give me words to speak. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Right. And anyway, so the guy comes out. He said, he said, yeah. He said, uh, how can I help you? And I said, well, I'm just going to tell you a story. I worked at this plant, blah, blah, blah. And I, I went through that whole thing. And I said, I said, I'm a Christian. I said, I didn't want to do this. It got pushed on me, and I'm here to give this back. I feel absolutely horrible. The Holy Ghost told me that this is something between me and him, and I have to make it right. And I said, I said, and I, I'm here to apologize to you and your company that you represent that I took it. I said, please forgive me. And he must not be a Christian. He's like, uh, okay, well, uh, why don't you just push that cart over there and get out of here? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I pushed that cart off, I jumped in my truck, and I was out the door. But you know what? When I left there, a burden that had bound my heart for seven years, it lifted off of me. It wasn't there every day. It just keep coming back. There's something. There's something you haven't done yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody looking at a sinner, aren't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'll tell you what. There was salvation that what worked its reward on me that day. Amen. And where my conscience was bound. I left with the freedom, amen, knowing that I was clean with my Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good except that he first bind the strong man? That's what Calvary did. When he shed that blood, he bound the devil. Amen. He bound him. We only give it to the devil. 
That's all we're doing. We're just give stuff to him. You don't have to give him nothing. You don't have to. You have a right by the word of God to speak the word at him. You resist that devil by the word. He shall flee. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Right? Jesus did that for you. Now watch. I'm going to go just a little bit farther. I see the time. And I, I got to close once again. But Job 1, 6. Now watch this. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan come also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright right man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. God protected that man because he was God's child. Now we know what happens. So what happened? God allowed Satan to take his children, turned his wife against him, took all that he had, not for time's sakes. But what did Job do? Job stayed right there, believing God, not understanding, but believing. Now remember part of the moral of the story, Brother Branham said, he said the thing that he feared most came. He feared that. Remember, he preached uh, when he preached uh, uh, perfect faith in '63. He said that. He said, he said the thing that he feared came to him. Right. If he wouldn't have feared it, it wouldn't have come. Yeah. Now God placed those things there, so it doesn't matter what has offended you as far as what fear you might have had. But I'll tell you what, get out of it. Don't hold on. It. If you don't get rid of it, it's going to come. Trust in the Lord your God, for he is your confidence. Amen. He is going to keep you. You think the government's going to get you, or you think this guy's going to get you, or the guy hiding in the bushes, they're going to get you. But if you trust that God is going to keep you, amen. amen, he is going to do more than just that, Amen. He is going to raise you up in the power of God and His righteousness. Amen. So watch. Job lost everything. And even his body was, was sown with disease. Now watch. Of course, we realize the end. I'm showing you the law of restoration business. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. He first had, he had to pray for his, his miserable comforters. He had to pray first and losing everything. He had to pray for the people that were trying to really break him and make him want to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You see the law of restoration? He doesn't just want to give you back what you've lost. He wants to give you back a lot more. talking about Mercedes Benzes and Lamborghinis. He's going to give you the things that are eternal. I'm not saying he won't physically bless you because he has. Hallelujah. But what I am saying is he wants to bring forth an eternal treasure to you. Amen. I don't know about you. Give me my family, Lord. Every single one of them. Give me my cousins, Lord. Let there be a revival strike the people, amen, that what? That hope has went forth from my life by faith to say they're mine, amen. The Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren 
and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him and all the evil the Lord had brought upon him. Every man uh, also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So he still has more people. What? Giving him more? <laughs> so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, that's twice as many, 6,000 camels, and and a 1,000 of yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Which is what? (laughs) That's what he didn't get a double portion of. Because he had seven before, right? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for a revelation that comes through this prophet? Amen. His kids were all cutting up. He said Job was there putting them under the blood. You got to believe it. Don't tell me everybody's kids look perfect. Sometimes you're looking and say, oh, God, what's going on here? Hallelujah. You put them right under the blood. You say they're mine. Amen. Hallelujah. They're going with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the law of restoration. Hallelujah. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I got to close. He said we're closing in this quote, so I got to close. No, yes, this is beautiful. I want you to see this. On failing realities of God in 60, he said, I've often thought this. We're closing, church. Listen to these remarks. I've often thought what, what, why, how we've deprived ourselves and how we've robbed God of his plan by not surrendering our lives completely to him. Everything that we have to him, how that we have disallowed his program. Oh, Lord Jesus. Does God deserve anything less than the representation of what this says? He doesn't. Who did he call to do it? You and I. Look at how Brother Ram brings us. We've disallowed his program. Why? Because of our selfish ways. Well, we're not surrendering to God like we ought to. No, this is how we do it. No, this is how we do it. We're getting quiet. How do we know what God's will is for us? We've got to go to him. Don't you see? That's, that's the very tenets of Nicolaitanism. Isn't it? is when we begin to put our own human ideas and we don't let the word of God lead us. You know, probably the greatest miracle of the book of Acts is how perfectly God was able to lead those people. It isn't the supernatural miracles. Those are all great. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank God for them. But to me, it was the communion with God and the ability for God to lead them in such a perfect way. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, he's trying to find uh, how we've lingered and made him to wait and wait and wait, trying to find somebody he could work through, trying to find a man somewhere that he could put confidence in, some man that would surrender everything, come in sane, sensible way to God and say, Father, here I am. I don't care. I'm, I'm going to follow the scripture, the blueprint. I don't care what anybody else says. I'll stay with it and really mean it. I don't care what it costs me, Lord. I'm nothing to begin with, but I want you to lead me and let the Holy Spirit that wrote this Bible and made these promises confirm it back through my life. I feel that you're leading me that way. Amen. See, it's allowing God to have the full influence on your decisions, your choices. Hallelujah. You know how it is. If we get in the way, how much trouble it causes. Thank God for that. Because remember, there's a people that are blessed. And they think blessing is a reality of their right. They get bigger, bigger, more money, more everything. Else. Oh, look at us. Brother Ram talked about it so many times. But what? It's a lie. Hallelujah. That means I've been long. I know. As we close. So what? It came down to Ziglach. I'll, I'll just go through it just real quickly. When David's main men came to Ziglach, everything that they had, their, their, their little tent city was burnt down. 
their wives and their children, everything they had was taken. You're very familiar with the story. <laughs> right? They even wanted to stone David, his soldiers did. But David had one thing that he did, is he actually consulted the ephod. He said, shall I pursue them? When it looked bad, he said, shall I pursue them? And the, the Spirit of the Lord came back with a message. He said, pursue, for thou shalt surely recover all. <laughs> you see how Bible this is? Think about that. An army burns your house down. They take your family. First thing you think is what? My family's dead. They've been harmed in, in, in inconceivable ways. Look at what you're seeing on the news. The atrocities we're watching right now. Thank God that the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 that it says, don't fear what comes to the sons of men. Don't fear what happens to them. Why do you say don't fear? Because he's going to keep you above it. But sister, we're bringing the revelation of invincibility in this hour. That's what we're doing. You've got to believe who you are. You've got to believe what the power you have is. David was so anointed of God that even his enemies in burning his things and taking his family, their animals away. They could only take them away. They couldn't tame it in any way. <laughs> well, I only want half my healing back. I only want the... Uh-uh, I want it all. <laughs> Hallelujah! There's a law of restoration here, amen? I don't just get it back. I get back more, amen? <laughs> so they pursued them and remember I believe it was the brook of Boza, Bazaar that what men were faint and they couldn't even go on But and what David said leave them here let's go get it back right. Amen. hallelujah almost done he said enforce he said have the privilege to enforce upon Satan the claims that God give us for God has a law and his word is a law and God came in this word made certain claims to the church. He gave you the word as your claim. Amen. Don't throw away the Old Testament. Don't throw away it. It's just as applicable as the New Testament with the right revelation. Therefore, we have a right to force these claims upon Satan, say, give it back, and he has to do it. Because we can take God's agent, the Holy Spirit, go right down on our knees and say, it's thus saith the Lord. Amen. He has got to give it up. That's all because the Holy Spirit is there to make him do it. The law of the land is to enforce. It's by the land for the land. Every right and promise this Bible gave you is yours. Praise the living God. It just keeps on going. I thought I was done. He said, what is it? Enforcing, giving it back. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Restore. Bring it back to the right order. If Satan has robbed you of a privilege of being a son or daughter of God, you don't feel like you're a son or daughter of God, what do you do? Notice, you don't feel it. I don't feel like much of a Christian. I don't feel like I'm a child of God. I feel like, I feel like my flesh, you know, I'm, just, I'm just a serpent and just sitting in a son of God church. No, you aren't. Amen. What it is, he's brought thoughts your way and what caused you to think his lie. <laughs> he said, the privilege of being a son or daughter of God, we have a right this morning by the Holy Spirit to enforce the claim of God. Bring them back. Amen. If he's afflicted you, made you sick, we have a right before God to enforce the laws of God by his stripes we're healed. Amen. Amen. Bring him back. Turn him loose. 
You're taking him out here under death and we claim him back. Bring him back now. That's the enforcement. Restore it back to its natural condition again. A man is sick, baby is sick, woman is sick, they're out of their natural condition. Then we have a right to enforce our claim. Not our claim, it's our claim because God gave it to us. God gave it to us. By his stripes we're healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes we're healed. He said we have a right to enforce the law and the lawgiver, Holy Spirit himself, is here with the agent of God to see that it's done that way. He said now the only way he can work is when you let him work. There it is, old fighters. You've got to believe it. There's a law. Oh, if I ever get to my text, there's a law. There's a law given amongst everything. You've got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, you see how, how we're taking it even farther with the rest of this word that says he doesn't give you just back what's yours. He gives you back more. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So what happens here? <laughs> there it is. He says, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troop and shall I overtake her? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them without fail recover all. Moving all the way down, David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before the cattle and said, This is David's spoil. But if you read, continue reading, he not only had that, he took everything they had. He had so much that he was able to send it to the tribes of Israel and they made him king. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now think about it. These are the ones that had rejected him as king. And he sent them gifts of the spoil God gave them. See, so the extra blessings that God gave him, he didn't keep them for himself to make him more rich and better. He sent it out to what? To bring everyone into a spot that they could be in the right position for the message of their age. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that was David is the king. <laughs> Christ is the king. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand. I'm done. Hallelujah. What's your expectation? Now, I don't want to confuse this idea. Because you know exactly, just like we said last night, this right here, it's like, oh God, where's this at? How, how, how can I do, I mean, how could I possibly? And you see, we've come under such, such a condition because we're not right with our Savior according to His Word. But this is what God is going to produce. This is what God wants to do. He wants to get you into such a spot. You're enforcing all of the word all of the time. Amen. I know I kept an hour and a half, probably a little bit over. I, I can't even read the time back. I didn't even look at it. God help me. Man, you put all that work in to set that, bad, that, that, that nice thing back there, and I didn't even follow it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'll tell you what, if you can catch who you are in the word, it changes everything. It's like as I'm looking at little, uh, she ain't little, but, but growing, growing Karis there. Within her is all the power to enforce the claim of this word. Amen. You've got to believe that God made you that way. Well, I'm just a, I'm just a little girl. I'm just, no, you are a child of God with all the rights yeah. of redemption in your hand. Amen. Therefore, you love the Lord your God. Amen. And say, God, Amen. give me your mind. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Amen. So, Lord, that as I'm coming to you in the life you gave me, I'm able to follow the path that you called for me and to do what you called me to do in this hour, to overcome the devil in all his tricks, all his lies, and to get back everything that the devil has taken from the bride. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're called for it. How may I say, that's what I am. Amen. Praise be to God. Real simple message today. It's a little long, but that's what, that's what I do. Yeah. Chew on it. Hallelujah. Chew on it. Glory. And get yourself in the condition. Don't go back out and, and, and be defeated. Don't back out. 
Don't go back out and do that. Just like last night. If you already feel like I went right back to what I am. Well, my kids made me do that or, 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 or so-and-so. They didn't treat me right. It just happened right after church. Don't worry about any of that. That's what the devil is trying to do to destroy you from being a great enemy and adversary to him. If he can just get you back in a rut to not see the rights and privileges that Jesus Christ died for to give you. Hallelujah. I'm going to say, I left that behind. Yeah. Hallelujah. All those things are covered by the blood. But yet, here we are at the end of the service. What will you do? Let's do the only thing that rightfully comes. Has the devil taken anything from you? Well, first we've got to be like Zacchaeus. Have I taken anything from somebody? I've got to get right. If you're all right there, praise the Lord. You can move step two. I see, I see eyes going like this thinking, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you might have some restoration to do yourself. Hallelujah. But now what would you do if you're free from that? Just as soon as you make the, even if there's something there, you say, God, I'll make that right. You're already ready for step two. Because when you have made by revelation the statement, I'm going to make it right. You go do it. Don't leave the moment of the word. Because if he's taken anything back, he's taken anything away from you, you have right now by the, by the power of the Holy Ghost the ability to bring it back. Let's bow our heads. It's been probably been four services. Much energy has been spent. But now as we're kind of bringing it back down to living in the in the true prosperity that the Holy Ghost has called for us. Brother Branham, he made, he made this known from his own life how this would work, not just for him, but for others. Which is what? It's not just bringing the blessing to him in restoration, but what? It's doing a work for others. How many would say with their hearts today, oh God, Satan's taken some things from me. Maybe you say, he took that specifically. I know he took it away. And I'm here to get right with my Savior right now. And being right with my Savior, I can take the enforcer and enforce a claim on Satan right now by the name of Jesus Christ. If there's something on your heart right now, we're going to pray into him right now. You are in just as much authority as I am. So if you have that enforcer, because he is in you, you have the right of revelation from him in you and through you to bring back that which was taken away. So as I pray, you can pray as well. And let's just reach out. We're living in a day where God wants to do great things. Do we have the spiritual courage enough to put the battle in array? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Thou knowest, O God, as we look back at our lives, we see imperfection. We see, O God, failures, and Lord, perhaps this being taken, that being taken, but yet, Lord, you gave us a word that, Lord, it's our rights by the Holy Spirit to get back what has been taken away. It takes faith, oh God, in your power. It takes faith in your love that you have for us to know you love us and to know that you want to work for us and that we are the called and elected of God that you want to bring this word forth today. Lord, as we reach to you now, Lord, thou knowest, O oh God, our condition. If the devil's stolen joy, we enforce the claim of the Holy Ghost against them now. Satan, you're a liar. We take our joy back right now by the Holy Spirit. 
whatever it is to each individual. We pray, oh God, move them by your Holy Ghost, oh God. Oh God, put that desire, allow it to build faith there, Lord, and take that back what the enemy has taken from them in restoration. We're believing, oh God, how great this is. You don't just give it back, but you bring, give back more, Lord. So with all of our heart, we see that word. We see it's possible, Lord. And we're asking, oh God, that we would live in the bountiful, abundant life that you've called us to in this hour. If there's one thing we could repent of, God, is that we've robbed you by not living your program out, by not allowing your Holy Ghost to find a surrendered vessel in us. And we lay that down, oh God, and may you be able, oh God, to restore your church back to what she should be, oh God. Take every ounce of humanism, take every ounce of organization, take every ounce of everything and let it be nothing but the pure word in our lives. We believe you'll do it now, Lord, for thy glory. And Lord, as all this word has been sown over the last four days, we pray, oh God, that it would anchor so deep in the hearts, oh God, that they would move, just like that quote said, in a greater power all the time as it becomes more in the minority. We're believing you'll do it now. We speak the blessing of the name of Jesus Christ over these people. And we bless your wonderful name for how great you are in your word. We love it. It's the very food to our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song. Uh, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. We we'll invite your pastor, song leaders, uh, our music players, however that's going to go. You believe all that? Oh, I went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me. Oh, yes, I, I took back what he stole from me. Oh, yes, I, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me well he's under my feet he's under my feet he's under my feet yes he's under my feet he's under my feet yes he's under my feet oh satan is under my feet oh lord now look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Oh, he healed my body. He touched my mind. Oh, he saved me. It was just in time. Well, I'm gonna praise his name. And each day is just the same. Every day, amen. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. I went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me. Oh, yes, I, I took you. Oh, yes, I, I took back what he stole from me. Oh, yes, I, to the enemy's camp. And I, I took back what he stole from me. Oh, yes, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. He's under my feet, under my feet, oh Satan, get under my feet.
Why did he speak to it? Because if God had a time, 